And that's this example down here. This is what I call skeletonization of a plant, okay? What happens is, let's say the most, most common plant is a Japanese holly, okay? It's a little green shrub, has small round leaves on it. No real significant bloom or anything, but it's the most common plant contractors use at houses. Uh, partly because it's cheap and they can get a fairly good one for the money, so it looks like they got something. However, it's very boring. <coughs> but worse than being boring is that people mistreat it. And they mistreat it because they don't want it to get any higher than the window sills, for example. Okay, so when it gets to the window sill, what do we do? We cut it off. Okay, we take those pieces of junk there and we snip it, we zip it, whatever we're doing, we cut it all off. Every time it reaches the window sill, we cut it off. Okay, well, that in itself probably wouldn't be bad, except that you gotta understand how a plant grows. Okay, that plant that you're cutting off all the time is an evergreen, okay, but it doesn't keep the same leaves all year long. The old original leaves that are down on the inside, they don't get much light, they're going to turn yellow and fall off. Then it's going to put out new growth on the outside, okay? Then the next set of leaves down in the middle is going to turn yellow and fall off. It's going to put out more growth on the outside. That's how plants grow. Now the problem is we cut the new growth off. So we lost the old leaves, we cut the new leaves away. Then we lost more old leaves, and we cut the new leaves away. Well, after a while, those leaves start working their way to the outside, and you don't have any leaves in the middle anymore. So they're falling off, just from natural attrition. But we keep taking away the new leaves. So in essence, leaves make food for the plant, photosynthesis, okay? So with fewer leaves, now the plant's beginning to starve itself, okay? So now you can see through the plant, it's visually unattractive, it's stiff as a board because it's got all these branches on the outside where we keep cutting it at the same place, and it doesn't have enough leaves to support itself, okay? Then you start getting die back, you have branches die out, and then in cases like I was describing earlier, you leave that dead branch in there, it stays in there. Okay, you cut it out, it'll fill back in, okay? So how do you fix this? Okay, one, stop shearing. Two, if you want it to grow to the height of your windowsill, cut it down here somewhere, six or eight inches below that, so that it can grow back to the windowsill. If you cut it at the windowsill and it grows again, you're gonna cut it off again. So take it down a little further and let it have a little room to grow, okay? That's one thing. The other thing is put the right plant in the right place. Put a four foot plant in that spot instead of a six foot plant or a 10 foot plant or whatever the case may be. Okay, now how do you fix that when the skeletonization has already been done? Okay, you go in below the cluster of branches that's gonna be occurring on the outside and every other one, you cut it out below that cluster. So you come down in here and you cut several of them. I, sometimes I call it punching holes in a plant. Um, but what that does is it allows sunlight down into the plant. Okay, and now because you cut this back here, it's gonna branch down here. It's gonna branch down here. So you're gonna get growth back on the inside again. Okay, it's gonna make it healthier. Okay, so next time you go to prune, these other ones that are out here, you're gonna cut them off and these ones here will be a little shorter. So you've actually reduced the size of the plant over a two-step process or a two-year process, and the plant has become healthier, okay, because you're getting growth back down in the middle. That's how you fix the skeletonized plant, okay? It's a little selective pruning. And that's how you really should prune most any of those types of plants rather than with head shears. With head shears, like I said, you're gonna cut through everything. Um, what else do we got? Good and bad pruning cuts, right here. A good cut is about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch above the bud. Okay, not much more than that. Fairly, roughly as close to the bud as you can get in most cases. Okay, this example, you can see how they raise the angle. It's way too much angle, and this part that's sticking up here is gonna die back. Okay, this one here is cut too close to the bud. The bud is probably gonna break off when it starts getting a branch on it. It's, it's gonna be too weak. Not enough support right there. And this one <coughs> is too much nub. And nub, as we saw in that example of that tree right there, nubs will die back most of the time. Sometimes they sprout, but usually they die back. But either case, um, it's not so good. So this is a good cut. These are all bad cuts. Now, we talked about square plants earlier. Here's your square plant. This is one of the reasons why it's not a good shape. It's not natural. Plants don't grow that way on their own. We make it that way, okay? This is your conical or pyramid shape. Now look at the difference. Sun shines on the plant. Square plant, sun hits the top significantly. Hey, sun, sun hits the top of the plant, it grows significantly. You're gonna get all your growth up there. 
it hits the top of the sides a little bit, but the further down the planet goes, the less sun it receives. Less sun means that less leaves, less photosynthesis. Okay, no photosynthesis, plants leaves fall off. This shape of the plant, I don't care where that sun is, the plant gets the whole side of the plant. I mean, the sun gets the whole side of the plant. Okay, therefore you get photosynthesis all the way down. You have leaves all the way down. Okay, so on this one. You get all the growth up here, you get three feet of growth on top and six to twelve inches on a little bit of side, nothing on the bottom, plus you get the lower leaves falling off of the bottom. So you end up with bare stems on the bottom. Tremendous amount of growth on top, but you've got to prune twice instead of once. Okay? Higher maintenance, less quality plant. Okay? Now, this plant, because the sun is evenly distributed all the way up and down the plant, that growth is evenly distributed. So you get the same amount of growth all over the plant. So instead of having three feet on top, you get 12 inches all the way up and down the plant. And you have leaves all the way up and down the plant. So this plant is much healthier than this plant. Now, next thing that makes this another good thing is this guy here's got to get up on a ladder in order to cut the top off. Okay, so he's got to get up on a ladder and do this thing, then he's got to move the ladder and do this thing. Okay, this guy here can stand from the ground and just walk along. <coughs> What's easier? Easier, safer, faster, and better. Because people do what their neighbor did, <laughs> and they don't ask questions. It's uh, harder. Keep up with the Joneses. That's, 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 that's why people use this thing here, because they yeah. think it's, it's all they know. It's all they saw anybody ever do, so they don't know that it's bad. And, and nobody ever told them it's bad or why it's bad, and they never stopped to ask a question. Okay, why, why does he do it this way, and why do you do it that way? Nobody ever asks unless they see you. Okay, so, but now you know, and now you can help spread the word. Um, that's what crepe myrtle gives you, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of branches. Because crepe myrtles are tough as nails, they're going to survive anyways, despite what you do to them. <laughs> okay, so they will come back. And just like in this example where it got cut several places, you see all the branches that was coming out of that. All of that is weak habit, okay, not, not to mention it's hard to prune, okay, hard to get in there and clean it back up. Because you can't get your cutters in there and you, you got to do all this finagling and stuff. Okay. So, crepe murder is not good. Crepe murder is indiscriminate pruning of a plant. These things are indiscriminate, they're not selective. We want selective. We want to select and choose every branch that we, that we pull. Okay. Question so far How do you treat uh, like suckers coming out of there? Right? So, suckers I didn't mention so far. Suckers, there's actually two kinds of suckers one that comes off a branch and one that comes off of the root. Okay. The ones that come off of a branch is called a water spout actually and it tends to go straight up and usually parallels the trunk and it goes straight up and almost very little branching to it. Okay, Most of those uh, water spouts and suckers are caused by stress on a plant. Stress, normally drought, not always, could be too wet, could be too much cold, could be buried too deep, could be any numbers of things that cause stress for a plant. Great myrtles have a tendency to sucker anyways, um, even though they're tough. But suckers from the root are kind of more difficult. The branch you can get to, you can see it, you can cut right to that branch collar and cut it off. The suckers in the root are a little hard to get because they're coming from either from underground or right at the ground. Okay, now there's a place on the tree, um, I don't know if I diagrammed it too well, not really. Um, okay. We're, we're, where the, where the tree meets the ground, the tree tends to buttress out a little bit, okay? That buttress thing actually proceeds underground a few inches depending on how big the tree is, more so as the tree gets bigger, okay? That, we, we tend to call that the crown, okay? And that crown is where the stem meets the roots, okay? And anything that you want to take off, you have to get below that crown to get it completely. So most of your suckers are going to grow from below the ground surface or right at the ground surface. But the problem is they tend to come up from under like that, okay, and you can cut them off. You cut them off, they're just going to branch again, just like they would up higher up on the branch, okay. So it's hard to get deep down into the sucker, but you want to try and get as close to the trunk as you can. Sometimes you've got to scrape out a little. And if you've had one there that's been suckering for years and years and you've got a multitude of branches spreading out, I find a pick works pretty good. Um, you know, you're going to dig out a little bit and then you're just going to chip it with a pick and try to cut it away from the trunk and get as much of it out of there as you can. Obviously, you don't want to go chipping all the way around the trunk, but 
try to get to the suckers themselves and that gets them as clean as possible which reduces your amount of suckering for a while at least anyhow. Suckering can be a problem particularly on grafted plants. Uh, the rootstock on a grafted plant is hardier than the top is, that's why they grafted it in the first place. Okay, but if the rootstock for the suckers, you've got to cut those off or the, or the, the root stock is going to become dormant, I mean uh, dominant rather, and then the top plant will get overgrown. So roses are grafted, uh, fruit trees are grafted, uh, lots of things like that are grafted. Uh, okay, see so where are we at so far? Let's see what I missed. Evaluate, uh, oh yeah, you can cut it twice, but you can't put it back on. So if you make a cut and, and step back and look at it, reevaluate it, um, if you want to cut it again, you can cut it again. But if you cut it too far and step back and look at it and say, oops, I made a big hole, well, it's a little, a little late now. So <laughs> the branch collar we talked about, the branch ridge, buds, uh, these are the buds on the plants. We kind of mentioned them a little bit. Uh, I didn't mention the segment. The segment is the length of wood in between the buds, and that can vary depending on the growth rate of the plant. Uh, <coughs> uh, Natchez crepe myrtle that grows about six feet a year, the, the nodes might be, or segments might be six inches long versus one that grows three feet a year, the nodes might be three inches long. So it's just kind of relative, it's not a real important factor really, it's just uh, kind of there. Um, uh, let's see, stubs and nubs we talked about, leading stubs, they die back. Uh, suckers and water spouts we just mentioned. Okay, double leader we talked about earlier. Balance and shape I didn't get yet. Uh, balance and shape. Okay, what is the natural shape for the tree? Okay, is, is it naturally a rounded plant? Is it naturally a vase shape? Is it a tree? Um, balance. Now this, this tree here, this example of this tree, uh, I've got two different descriptions, one's thinning, one's reduction. If I'm thinning, I'm going to take out some of the inside stuff, okay, and cause the tree to get a little bit bigger. If I'm reducing, I'm going to take off the outside branches to cause it to fill in from inside and make it tighter, okay? So, still structure. Okay, now on the back side. Different pruning, uh, Okay, it says pruning is an action, creates a reaction which changes the direction or habit of a plant. Growth does not stop growth unless, in the case of the tree topping, you might actually, actually kill it, but that's rare. Uh, mature size is an average size, average age, uh, or approximate full grown size which a plant's expected to reach, it, reach in either an average lifetime, or in the case of shrubs, probably 10 years, sometimes 15. Normally, you do not like to remove more than one third of a plant at any one given pruning. Okay, normally, now there are some exceptions to that. Okay, so now we'll look at the different plant styles. We talked about pinching earlier, so I'm not gonna go over that again. Disc budding is, is the opposite of pinching, and that's where, like I said, they take a bud away to, so the energy goes into the remaining bud to make it bigger. There's another thing that, they, that they'll do with that. They take this uh, little chemical called gibberellic acid, and they'll put a drop of that on the bud that they leave remaining, and that makes it even bigger. But that's a little science, I guess. Uh, let's see. Uh, structural pruning, okay? Take away dead wood, crossovers, duplicates, double leaders, all those anytime. Anytime you're there, you take them away. You control the direction of pruning based on where you cut the plant above which bud you're cutting. Um, balance and shape. We talked about a little bit. If you have a branch sticking out way out here and the rest of it's like this, let's take that branch down inside so that we now have a nice shape. Um, reduction. Reduction is when you reduce the size of a plant but not, not by changing the structure. Okay, in this case here, if we took these outside branches, that would be reduction. If we took the inside ones, that would be thinning. Okay. Rejuvenation we haven't talked about. Do that sometimes on these skeletonized plants. Now, rejuvenation basically is a start over procedure. It's taking the plant down pretty much to the ground and it's starting that plant over. Now, things you need to realize. One is it's fine for broadleaf plants. Evergreen or deciduous will usually respond fine to that. Two, conifers will not. If you do that to a conifer, you might as well just finish, get out the shovel and finish digging it out right now. Because conifers don't bounce back from rejuvenation. If you cut a branch of a conifer past its foliage, that branch is dead. 
it will not recover. So you might as well cut that branch all the way out. If you cut conifer back past its foliage, it's gone. It's not coming back. Broadleafs, however, evergreen or not, will bounce back from that type of pruning. And the rate at which they bounce back is going to depend a little bit on how big the plant was, which means how hard you had to cut it back to do this. The bigger the plant is, the slower it's going to recover because it's used to having 6,000 leaves out here to support the plant, and now it has none, okay, or a few, okay? So it's got to develop leaves so it can start growing again. So it's got to recreate its whole life cycle, okay? But it will do that. Things that will help it do that is watering the plant, fertilizing the plant, and uh, those two main things will help it. Um, but rejuvenation is a good viable method for salvaging a plant that looks like crap or that's over the hill or that's been skeletonized, something like that. Um, and sometimes the plant, you know, if it's too far gone, then you just take it out and put a new one in. Uh, okay, thinning, we talked a little bit about thinning, uh, taking out the weaker branches. Shearing, shearing is uh, this guy here. That's, that's what causes this thing here is because people like to shear. Um, the hedges, I realize that if you work for a company and they're pruning the hedge, they're not going to want you to cut it by hand because it takes a long time and he's probably not charging you your time out by the hour. Your boss is probably not charging you out by the hour, so he's probably wanting you to get done a little faster, so you're probably going to shear some things. But what you should do behind that is once you're done, once, once you finish shearing the head, well, this is actually an example of somebody shearing a hedge, obviously, from the description if you, if you can call that from my drawing but but okay so this edge has been sheared okay so what you do after that is you go through after you've done the shearing and, and you can kind of see it or you can take your hand and pat the plant and where it's really stiff okay go in and cut out the cluster that's real stiff cut that cut down and just cut inside and make little tiny holes not going to hurt a thing it's going to flush out deeper which will make that hedge healthier actually so after you've sheared it, go through and take out the worst, <laughs> heaviest branch of stuff that you can find that's sticking out or it's right there at the surface. Because it's just going to create far more, and, and all that growth is going to go there. All that growth will go on the outside and nothing in the middle. And if you can continue to get growth in the middle of a plant, the plant will be healthier, it'll be more lush, it'll have more leaves and a deeper range in order to survive by Oh, uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, defoliation I haven't mentioned. Defoliation is not so much of a pruning as it is a um, uh, nursing technique. Um, I'll give you an example. I delivered a dogwood tree one time that was bald and burlap, which means it was uh, field grown so it wasn't in a pot and I laid it down in the truck and the ball was kind of around it and I went around a curve and it rolled a little bit and it stood itself up so now I, unbeknownst to me I'm driving down the road with the foliage sticking up in the air well I was on highway or wherever I was and by the time I got to the job site I got out and looked at it and said oh crap the leaves were all black and the wind burned okay well if I leave those leaves on the plant the plant is going to spend a lot of energy trying to recuperate those leaves, and it cannot. Those leaves are damaged. They need to go away. So eventually, the leaves will fall out and they'll put off new. But I can accelerate that process by stripping off those damaged leaves now. Take them off now, and now it has no choice but to go ahead and put out new growth. Okay? And the plant will recover just fine. The watering will be helpful. Um, <coughs> if you have, let's say you recently planted a plant Japanese maple in particular, uh, and you had to go away for a couple weeks, came back and the plant's all crispy critter because it didn't get water while you were gone, it didn't rain, irrigation missed it or whatever. Okay, so you've got leaves that are all crumpled, brown, crispy critters, strip them off. It's going to try to recover those leaves, it can't. Those leaves are transpiring moisture and not giving anything back. Okay, so take those leaves away, that will stimulate the plant to put out new growth with water, it will help again. So. Um, that's what defoliation is, and this has a useful purpose um, in cases like that. Um, topping we talked about is bad, um, and then crepe myrtle we talked about a little bit. 